There's a quote from Derek Sivers. If you cannot learn to focus, you will live an unrewarding and unsuccessful life. It's one of the skills you have to learn. We live in a time when distractions are becoming more and more evident. Television is getting better. Facebook is a laboratory that studies the way of distracting you and then holding your attention on something else. Your mobile device in your pocket is crack cocaine for the distraction. If you don't learn to focus, you will always work for someone who has learned the ability to focus. So it's something to work on. So here I am in ESA Business School. I got a, another view out over the garden. Uh, beautiful place. This is one of the workrooms where teams come and work on a case, work on a problem, share their findings as they're thinking through a problem. When I was young, I didn't have focus. When I was young, I was very lucky. The subjects that we learned in school, they just somehow, I just picked them up quickly. Maths was easy. I knew how to do well on exams. I knew how to do just enough to pass the tests. So in all of my time in school, I never learned to sit down and work hard on something that I didn't understand. And I had a real rude awakening uh, probably at the age of 30 when I was an entrepreneur but also started with the habit of writing, writing blog posts, writing articles for my teaching here at ESA Business School and writing is something that truly shows how poor your focus is. In my case what I realized is I just didn't get words written and I was Writing, in the words of Stephen King, writing is binary. Uh, you write, you're a writer, you don't write, you're not a writer. You produce words. You produce words, you're a writer. You don't produce words, you're not a writer. You can't call yourself a writer unless you produce words. And it's extremely hard to get yourself to sit down and produce words. And a tool that I found that has been massively helpful in teaching me, you know, one, how bad my focus problem was, and two, starting to harness my concentration and get things finished, is a tool called the Pomodoro Method. And the Pomodoro Method was invented by an Italian doctoral student, uh, Francesco Cellilli, I think he's, he's called. And Francesco was working on his uh, doctoral thesis, but he just couldn't get it started, couldn't get it started. And he was getting more and more frustrated of just being unable to start this massively long thesis writing. And one day he was at home in his mother's kitchen in Italy, and in her kitchen, there was a kitchen timer uh, in the shape of a tomato, which in Italian, pomodoro. And it was a timer in the shape of a tomato. You could twist it, set it to a time, and his mother used it to cook cakes, to cook bread. And he took the pomodoro, the timer, he twisted it to 20 minutes. He sat down and he said, I'm going to just write on my thesis until the buzzer goes. And he wrote for 20 minutes. And he ended up finishing his thesis quite quickly because he would write for 20 minutes at a time. And he ended up publishing a book about this method of dividing your time into 20 minute slices, intense focus, then go and take a rest. Uh, not here to go into the full detail of the method, you can find that from uh, the Pomodoro Method.com, I think is the, the website. But the simple basics of the method you need one, a timer, something that you can set a time, and two, you need to pick a project that's important to you. You set the timer to 20 minutes and you start working on the project. If you feel the urge to go and get a glass of water, go get the water, come back, set the timer back to 20. If you need to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom, come back, set the timer back to 20. And the question, how many Pomodoros can you achieve in a day? It sounds easy, but when I first began, it was hard to even achieve one. 
one Pomodoro. It was hard to get myself to sit down and stay focused on one task for 20 minutes. And over the last seven or eight years, I've worked a lot on getting 20 minutes of work done, then taking a break, setting yourself these gaps of time. I remember when interviewing high performance athletes, one of the things that really struck me by the likes of Kilian Jornet, Joseph Ahram, Mika Soner, all of them have found the way of dividing time into the chunk of time that it's easier to do than to give yourself an excuse for not doing. Randall Fiennes is the oldest European to have climbed Everest. He climbed at 69 years old and it was his fourth attempt. He'd failed on the previous three attempts and on his fourth attempt Randall Fiennes climbed Everest. And he says he achieved it because of something his wife said. His wife said to him, Ranulf, climb it like the horses. And he said, what do you mean climb it like the horses? And his wife is an animal trainer, in particular horses, and she says a horse runs until it collapses. A horse has no concept in its head of the finish line. The horse will run until it cannot run. It's the jockey's job to make sure that the horse has enough energy to do go the distance. But a horse runs until it cannot run. This time, when you go to Everest, when you arrive at base camp, take one look up at the summit. Have a good look at it, see it, and then ignore it and ask yourself one question. Can I take one more step? If you can take one more step, take it. If you can't, pause and ask the question again. Randolph Fiennes says he climbed Everest on that fourth attempt because he never ever allowed himself to look at further than that one step. Even if you think you've got the, the skill of focus, why don't you get a timer, set it to 20 minutes, pick something important, pick something that you really want to get done. It's not urgent, but important. Set the timer to 20 now and see if you can accumulate one Pomodoro. It's harder than you think. You must learn to focus. Now here I am, ESA Business School, wonderful view behind. It's now time for me to go pick up the car and go pick up my daughter from school and uh, head home and think about what's for dinner.